welcome to TT's Urban Pantry. Thank you so much for watching. I just washed my hands. We are canning up some corn today. We're pressure canning corn. Yay. You see that corn back there? All right. So I figure it's about six pounds of corn. I use two two pound packages of frozen corn from the store. And then I had six, 12 ears. So I had three packs of four ears and um, those in, that ended up being about. Hi, Shy Moss. Thanks for joining. Hey, Bess. Yeah. Hey, Lydia. So I just eyeballing it. It looked like it was about the same amount. So I'm going to say we've got six pounds of corn back there. Um, it's already been cut off the cob. The frozen corn has been um, completely thawed. Does anyone say unthawed or do you say thaw? I say unthawed. And um, I had a coworker at work was like, that's not correct here. It's thawed, not unthawed. But I was like, that's what we say all the time. Go unthaw the chicken. <laughs> so what do you say? Thaw or unthaw? Either way, it's completely unthawed. Um, and it's all been rinsed off and cleaned. So it's all ready to go back there. My pressure canner is full of pint jars. Usually I would do a quart, but I decided to do a pint because when you're pressure canning corn, it does take a really long time. You say both. You, Shine Ma says she says thaw. And Lydia says she says both. When I'm like at home and I'm not thinking about it. I say unthaw. Now, if I'm on camera or depending on who I'm talking to, I'll try to say um, thaw, but it just comes out unthaw. <laughs> but my pressure canner is full of pint jars. Pints are going to take 55 minutes to process. Corn takes a long time to process. If you're doing a quart, it takes 85 minutes or an hour, 25 minutes. So for time's sake for the video, I just decided to go with the pints. Um, if the video ends up being a little long, don't worry about it. You ain't got to stick around. That's, that's fine. I understand it's a long time just to watch something process. So no commitment. Well, yep, doing corn today. So if you're ready, I am ready to get started processing this. I'm really excited. So I got my water boiling back here because this is going to be a raw pack. I'm going to add boiling water to it. The canner, like I said, is full and ready to go. These jars are hot. So it's okay to add hot water to them. No thermal shock going on because these are all hot in here. Move this out the way. See how much corn you get. I'll let you see. Full of jars. I'm not sure how many jars I'm going to get from it. So I'm going to start with six. If I need to do a second batch, that's fine. how easy that is. Especially if you grow your own corn or know somebody that's got the hookup on some fresh sweet corn. This is really convenient.
I feel like green beans and corn are probably the easiest thing to press your can. He's got a one inch head space. I'm just pushing it all down. Okay, now this step is completely optional. You don't have to put salt in, but I am putting in half a teaspoon. I don't feel like the seasoning sticks when you open up the jars. I never feel like I taste the salt. I always end up adding my own salt and my own seasoning. But I was told that this helps the color, helps keep that fresh color and it helps with um crispness keeping your contents nice and crispy so now that that's done i'm gonna add some water to these trying not to reach over the camera Just fill your jars up with some hot water. Said so these are, this is going to be raw packed. If you are hot packing it, you would just take your corn and bring that up to boiling with your water. I don't like doing it that way, especially for corn, because then I'm trying to fish all the corn out of the water as it's floating around. Make sure you debubble. And these do need to be topped off a little bit now that I've de debubbled. See, it's still got a lot more room in there. Please get filled one inch head space.
done yet. These are hot, be very careful. And before I do more, I just want to hop over to the chat, see if anyone has any questions. Why not keep the water? You mean when I emptied the water? So when I took the empty jars, the hot jars out the canner and I poured that out? If I was water bath canning, I would keep the water. But I'm pressure canning and the instructions for my pressure canner says three quarts of water. And I already have the three quarts of water in there. So I don't want to um, mess up anything. I don't know if it's going to mess up anything if you go over the three quarts of water, I just don't when I'm pressure canning. But like I said, if I, um, I'm watching the dogs, I'm sorry. Codex got a bone and Chewy's around them, so I'm just watching them. So when I fill my pressure canner, I get my three quarts first, and then I put my jars in. Sometimes the jars start to float as the water level goes up and you start filling it with more jars. So I just put the water in there to kind of weigh it down so they're not all floating around. If I'm only doing a couple and, and they don't float, I won't put water in it. But if they start to float, that's why I put the water in there. Good morning. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'm live. Um, let's see what else. It looks good too. I know we get a pantry update after this. You sure do. I'm gonna do an update on how much has been canned this week alone. I'm filling my jars too. All right now, Shine Moss. How many? Um, do you know how much corn you had? He says less water. Okay. So I'm going to go fill those other jars up. I got four more left. Don't mess with him. That's a new ball. Get out of his face. Okay, so that's it. And I'm just getting the last of this corn. So they both come up. Well, this one's just a little bit short. All right, I'm gonna fill them both with water. Okay. 
And I forgot the salt. Perfect. You see that? I almost put that lid on there. So nine pints, which equals four and a half quarts. And if you got any vinegar left over, you can pour that inside. of corn and two pounds of mixed vegetables. How many jars um, did you get them all filled? I'm wondering how many jars you ended up with. So I figured I had about six, six pounds. And that just gave me nine quarts or nine pints. And hello, hello, hello. Welcome anyone that has just joined the room. I am demonstrating how to pressure can corn. So the corn has already been off the cob or unthawed, <laughs> rinsed off and cleaned and everything and put into the jars. And now the jars are in the pressure canner. I have my heat on high and I'm just gonna wait for that pressure canner to build up some pressure and start releasing the steam. Let me do the microwave. What kind of corn am I canning? Fresh off the cob? Yes, ma'am. Well, half and half. Fresh off the cob, so 12 ears. And then I have four pounds of frozen sweet corn. Seven pints and, and a half jars. Nice, nice. I feel like when you open up that corn, it tastes like it's just off the cob. It does not lose any of the texture of the sweetness. Um, so I was saying back there that I don't add any seasoning to it. When I was first doing it, I used to add salt and pepper, maybe a little garlic powder or some like Cajun seasoning. But then I always felt when I opened up the jar, it didn't it didn't stick to it. I still ended up seasoning it anyways. 
So I don't add any seasoning, just the salt, and that's more for color and crispness. So I don't add any seasoning to it. Um, it's not recommended that you add any butter to it. You don't want a can of fat. So you don't have to add any butter or any oil or to it beforehand, but you can always add that to it after the fact. And I feel like, the, like I said, the corn always kept its freshness that in the past, I've been able to open up a jar and make fried corn out of it. I've never made fried corn out of frozen corn. It doesn't have like that. I don't know what it's called. You know how when you cut the corn, you got that little corn milk. The frozen corn doesn't have that. You need that little corn milk to add that starchiness when you're making fried corn. So I've never done it off of frozen corn, but I have off of corn that I've canned. Pint and a half jars are between a pint and a quart. Yes, and I actually like those. I don't have any more and I have not seen them in the store. The ones that I have are being used. I did open up one of my pint and a half jars the other day. And those are usually like the asparagus jars too. So I have one hanging around, but I, I do like those jars. They're always nice when you're canning something and um, you have too much for a pint, but not enough for a quart. Just grab one of those and it's perfect. How many jars did the 12 ears yield? So I ended up mixing it. So I had my 12 ears and it didn't even fill up my strainer. It was like half a strainer. So I went and grabbed a, um, I had two two pound bags of frozen corn. So I guess if we do the math, and I said I have about six pounds all together, the, I'm sorry, the two, the two bags were two pounds each, and I have about six pounds. So I feel like the, the 12 ears gave me two pounds, and we have nine jars in there, so just a guesstimate, I'm going to say the 12 ears gave me two pounds, which is three pint jars. I'm doing that math right. Don't ask me. I don't math. I didn't pass that class. So I hear my water. It's starting to boil. No pressure has built up in it yet. It's not steaming or venting or anything. Hold on, let me separate these dogs. I passed. So Kodak has a brand new filled bone and he can't eat it. He just gnaws on it. But Chewy, which is the little dog, he's just completely oblivious and he gets so close. And then Kodak gets protective and he starts moving it. But then Chewy's still up in his face and I ain't want no issues today. I ain't want no issues. So I want to put him in Mimi's room. She in there. They can play while Kodak chews out, plays with his bone. Hey, Homestead in the hood. And anyone else that I might have missed coming into the room. Hello, hello. So, Chine Moss, do you have your jars in the canner yet? Or are you still filling them? And if you can, join me tomorrow where I'm going to make some peach orange marmalade. I'm going to use some of these peaches that I got. Lydia at Best Yet Journey got me on that marmalade kick. Hi, Angela. How are you? Got me on that marmalade kick. She made some. Was it pineapple? What did you make, Lydia? Or was it orange? I don't know, but she made it. So then I made some 
strawberry lemon and honey that stuff it don't it don't stand a chance in my house forget the peach cobbler jelly forget the apple pie jelly forget the festive pepper jelly that marmalade <laughs> It does not stand a chance. So I'm making a new recipe tomorrow. So I hope you can join me. And it's going to be the peach orange. So I've got two oranges here and I've got my peaches ready to go. I got some biscuits in the freezer. <laughs> I'm going to have to, one of them jars is not going to get canned because I'm going to have to um, bust that open and eat what we got. I just put the lids in hot water. I debubbled. Wonderful. So I can hear it. There's definitely a sound difference. When it first started, look at that. Starting event. When it first started, it just sounded like the water inside was bubbling and then it got quiet. If I can describe that. It got quiet, and then that's when I started talking. I was like, okay, I know something's going on. Some type of chemistry stuff is going on in there. And then it started to vent. So as you can see, the water is coming out that little top port thingamajig. That means it's venting. Once it's a steady stream, once it's a steady stream, then you want to start your timer for 10 minutes. It needs to vent like that for 10 minutes to help push the rest of that air out of your canner. And it's just puffing along right now. So Angela, how did your pickles turn out? How many jars did you end up with yesterday? And did you end up doing your peppers as well? I have to say, I am really excited about this week. I have had a really good time and I feel like I'm most excited about the chicken soup that I'm a can on Friday and the beans that I'm a can on Saturday. And I know it's summer, but we eat soup year round. I just had a bowl of noodles and um, that chicken, that chicken soup. And them beans, because I will make red beans and rice out of them. It's so convenient just to open up a jar of beans that you know you did. And you can add some seasoning to the beans. I feel like the seasoning sticks with the beans. Maybe it's the starch in the water or something, but it does stick. Not steady yet, but almost. I'm gonna go wipe my canner down. Hi, Doctor. Cheneva Early, did I say that right? Dr. Cheneva Early, thank you so much for joining. I don't believe I've ever seen you in the chat before. So welcome, welcome to TT's Urban Pantry. And tell us, are you a canner? Are you a gardener? Have you ever canned anything before? Yes, that's right. Got it. <laughs> Angela says, I'm sorry, I'm driving. Two pour of white pickles, bread and butter, and four pints. Four pint sized jar of green cucumbers, bread and butter. And yes, I did the peppers. That sounds wonderful. Do not be texting and driving, no. <laughs> You just sit and listen, you are given a pass. Do not be texting and driving. 
Um, Dr. Geneva Early says, I just started my garden this year. That is wonderful. I always, I've had a garden, I'm gonna say about six years, but I still don't call myself a gardener. As Lydia says, I'm in the garden community, but I don't garden. <laughs> The way that is, I can't tell if it's a steady stream or not. You. All right. The steam from both of them were kind of blending together and I couldn't see, but to me, almost, it's not a steady stream. If you can tell, it's still a little bit broken up. I'm looking out of the steam that's coming out the top, not the side. That little nipple gasket thing just popped open. So now we should start to see a steady stream out this top vent. Looks steady to me. So I'm gonna start my timer for 10 minutes. All right. You need to have a steady stream of venting for 10 minutes before you can put your um your weight or start your gauge. The Rambling Homemaker, welcome to the chat. Hi, TT. Can like crazy last year, but nothing this year. My daughter keeps reminding me I'm behind. So welcome. And what is your first name? So I can call you by your first name. I don't think I've ever seen you in the chat. So thank you so much for joining by. Thank you so much for um, viewing the channel. Hi, Mona. Do you got that little baby boy with you today? So what are some things that you guys like to can the most, both pressure and water bath canning? Allison, hi, Allison. I'm going to try to remember that. Hi, Erica. Erica, my fly family. Hi. Yes, he's here. Hi, baby. My jars are in the canner. Yes. <laughs> I mostly can meat. Do are you a says homemaker? Are you a homesteader? Do you um like actually process your own meats and everything? I am not a homesteader. I am actually a city girl at heart. So we can't have any, um, what do they call it? Livestock, farm animals in district. He's waving hi. But I was just saying, I wouldn't mind getting some chickens. Lydia at Bessia Journey, she, um, her chickens, the, the journey, and she's um, documented it all from, you know, just little chicks. And I think they're just six months old from little chicks. They are producing like crazy already. That is wonderful. I wish I wish I could have some chicks. Maybe I could look into that and see exactly what the ordinance is here in the city. Can I have one? Can I have two? I've seen some places where they say you can have chickens, but no roosters, or you can have a certain amount of chickens. Um, so I'm wondering exactly what our city ordinance is. I got Kodak, but I feel like, I feel like he can be trained to leave the chickens alone. He's good with chewing. 
I still don't trust him with Chewy. I still watch him around Chewy. But he's pretty good with Chewy until it's about food. I am a stay-at-home mom. I find meat on clearance and deep sales in can it. I would absolutely love to have chickens. I was allowed to have hens, not roost. We are allowed to have hens, not roosters. Chine Ma says I have seven chickens. Wow. Question. How do you can beans soak or no soak? I did both and soaking makes the beans mushy. So I am going to soak them. I'm actually going to can beans live um, this coming up Saturday. I do a late night canning live, it's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But I am going to um, can up some beans and I do soak them. I'm going to do a quick soak. I soak them because the recommended time and the recommended recipes are made for soak, soaking for, um, what do they call it? I seen soaking, but I was wondering if anything else. But for the beans that have already been in water. Um, and I'm gonna do like a quick, a quick boil a quick soak method with those. But yes, the recommended times and the recommended specifications are for beans that are soaked. So when they're not soaked, you need to allow for that extra time for them to soak and for the heat to um, penetrate through unsoaked, completely dried beans. The time that's given in most of the books are for ones that are, you know, already soaked and everything. So that's why I do it because I have not found an approved re recipe and approved time to um, not allow you to soak them. I haven't had, I have not run into the issue where I felt like they were mushy. When I was first doing it, I felt like there was a lot of starch in the water and it would give like, the top of my jars a cloudy film and I never knew if that was good if it wasn't good so after that I just rinse them rinse them rinse them like crazy get as much starch as I can off and there's actually a difference and um because seeing I I love canning some red beans it's so convenient to just open up a jar of red beans put that over some rice Heat it up and season it and got some red beans and rice. Yes. <laughs> Angela says, I finally made it home. Wonderful. You made it home safe. So that is going hard now. And we still have a couple more minutes. It was going to keep beeping until I moved it. I'm sorry. All right. It's that um, we've got one of those robot vacuums. And thankfully, my husband got it. Um, I don't know what you call it. He got it at one of those places that does like the bins. Have you heard of them? Like they're like the Amazon bins or something, but they're all like really cheap clothes out. So he got that for like $10 and I just went to the website and um, order. It didn't have a brush. So I'm going to order the brush for like $15. So altogether, I'm saying for $30. Um, it's cute, but we have a dog that sheds like crazy all year round and it just does not pick up. It does not pick up the way I would think it would. And it's always getting stuck under something or doing something that it didn't do yesterday. And now it's just going around. It's, I think they're cute. If you ain't got no kids, if you ain't got no animals. <laughs> but I got animals. Wow, I have never done red beans, only pintos. That will definitely be my next project. 
Yes, Angela. And I've even done the red beans and put sausage in it. And it was fresh ground sausage. I had ground it myself. And I put sausage and peppers in there. And we are out. We are out of those. So I think I might do that recipe on Saturday because, like I said, Carbon Q, welcome. Another new face, another new name that I don't think that I have ever seen before. So welcome to the channel and welcome to the chat. I just got my Azu order with 25 pounds of red beans to can. And I do fast beans. That's wonderful. I like to, I've never heard of that website. I'm gonna have to check it out. I've got my pa my paper and I'm writing that down. You say, Azur? Am I saying that right? <laughs> but I get these big gallon jars sugar in this one but i fill them up with beans so if i can get beans where they're like a dollar for two pounds or something like that i get them like crazy so down in the basement i've got red beans great northern pinto beans my husband doesn't like black eyed peas i don't like black beans so that's really about the only beans that we get okay so it's been 10 minutes my canner has been venting for 10 minutes. So I'm going to go put the weight on. I have an electric stove. Right now I have it set on six. Once it actually gets to rocking and everything, I'm going to turn that down between two and four, whatever's going to regulate that, um, regulate everything. It's our standard, and it's a place where you can buy bulk, and it does drop. It does drop once a month. Nice. I um, I have this big thing of sugar because we had got like Costco or something, and got like twenty five pounds, and I split it up. I had most of my sugar in these little um, half gallon jars. And then I put the rest in this gallon jar. And when I went down into the basement to um, get another thing of sugar from the basement, I only had this gallon jar. So to me, that signifies I need to stock back up, especially with these prices going up. I need to stock back up on some sugar. I need to check like my cornmeal, my flour, white rice, brown rice, jasmine rice. I just need to start stocking back up on these dry ingredients because they lasted me well over a year, almost into two years. Angela says, Tia, I do have a question. When you are canning in quart jars, can you lay the jars horizontal in the canning pot instead of keeping them vertical? I hope that makes sense. Yes. So do you mean... When I'm heating up the jars, where I just have the jars heating up in the um, canner before I actually put the contents into the jar, or are you actually talking about the canning process where they're um, like now it's gonna start processing that part? know which 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 part of the canning process are you talking about the canning process so no you should not they should be sitting up and the reason is so you have everything in your jar you have your jar let's say i got corn in here i got corn in here i got my jar it's been cleaned i put this on top and I put it down. Now it always says fingertip tightness. So you're doing it just fingertip. You're not going to get it an extra squeeze. It's not sealed. Your The contents of your jar can still come out. 
um, whatever's in the water or anything can still come in because it's not sealed or anything. So if you lay it down horizontal, one, depending on how many you have in there, it could be rolling around in there. And two, you don't want whatever liquid you have in here to start to seep out. Now, I know if you're water bath canning it, you are filling it up, but gravity, it's going to like, excuse me, gravity is going to, I don't know, your vacuum is going to just have a better, your vacuum still is going to be better protected standing it up as opposed to laying it down. Um, there have been times where I opened up the canner, especially where I'm doing jelly jars and they're small and they're kind of tipped over a little bit. And I just take them out. You know, I don't reprocess those or do anything along with it. I just take those out and um, just sit them on the side and do everything. But I know that when I put it in the water, it was straight up and down. So it is 247. My canner is back there rocking. You can hear it. You can see it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I'm doing pints, which is 55 minutes. So at 342, that will be 55 minutes. I can take those out. I'm going to go and turn my eye down. That's a good steady pace, but it doesn't have to be quite as high, and especially with corn, which you are canning for a longer period of time. I've had it where I've run out of water in the canner. And you can tell you've run out of water. So how do you run out of water? Because you put whatever amount of water is in there and you've got it, you're, you know, you've got your heat so high, it's boiling out faster than it would. And I can always tell it if I start to smell. If if I'm cooking corn, I can't smell the corn right now. But if I just randomly start to smell the corn, that's letting me know I'm running out of water. And you can also tell it because it will slow down because it's starting to lose pressure. It will slow down. Now, if I got about five minutes left, I'm going to ride those five minutes out. <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm making sure that it's still going. That pressure is still there. I'm going to ride it out. But if I got like 20, 30 minutes in the process, I know there is no way that it's going to maintain that speed. So you might as well just call it quits at that point. Take it off. Let the pressure fall. Put the right amount of water in there and start back over your timer at zero. Start your process back over at zero. It's happened to me before. It happened on me before 90 minutes. And I'm like 50 minutes in. I still got a half hour, but I boiled all that water out too soon. So right there is a good steady pace. If you can hear it and you can see it, that's a good rock. I think they say they recommend um, it should rock three to four times a minute. Hi, Gina. Welcome to the chat. And I know mine is rocking a little bit more than three to four times a minute, but with my stove being electric, um, I kind of have to think in advance. I know if I start to turn that down any more than it is, um, I'm not going to be able to catch it to turn it up as I would if it was fire and I can really start to regulate it better. So right there is personally the lowest I will let mine rock on a electric range. But that looks good. So does anyone else have any questions while we're waiting for this bad boy to um, finish? And Chine Moss, how are you? Were your lids done um, heating up yet? And Gina, I'm glad you're here because I was thinking about you the other 
um, the other day when you had said that um, you get like your sugar and your flour in bulk. And I was even saying that I do as well. And I put it in these big, I mostly use these because this is what I have, but I do have about five or six of these big gallon jars. And when I went down to the basement, this was all that I had of sugar. So now I know I need to go get, definitely get some more sugar, but I need to double check and see what other dry ingredients I got down there. I was doing a grocery order last night and I'm, it's minty now. Wonderful. And I was just looking at the prices. Most of the time when I'm doing my grocery orders, I have my regulars. I get my dog food on grocery orders. Um, but I just kind of have the regulars that I buy, but I was getting a couple extra things. And even like the frozen vegetables where they used to just be a dollar, they were up to like two fifty. And um, what else did I get? I don't have my receipt with me, but I was just looking at stuff and even the simple things like the minute bags of rice where they used to be a dollar or two, they were up to $3. So I need to get out to Costco where we can buy stuff in bulk. I am going to check out this Azure website, A-Z-U-R-E, and see what I can get in bulk. Go ahead and fill everything up so we don't run out. So I'm going to check that website out once we're done. I have a mural canner and had to wait for the little red plunger to pop up. I've seen those at Menards. And I have been thinking about getting a second canner. But I'm so used to my old tried and true busted Presto. I don't know if I want anything else. As you can see, me and Presto back there have been through a lot. <laughs> so I know we were talking about the beans. I just wanted to take a quick peek in my book and see if I can find the quick soak process. Maybe it's in this one. And China Moss, I know you said you're doing mixed vegetables. So do you have corn, green beans, carrots, peas? What kind of vegetables you got in there? It's still working, it sure is. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> that boy, that bad boy back there has lasted me. Now, no, I might randomly pop up with a, another one. Okay. Here we go. So beans. So the quick soak process that I use is, um, yes, <laughs> is what Ball says. So I just add enough water to cover by two inches. I bring that mixture up to a boil. So I bring that, those beans up to a boil. Boil for two minutes. Remove from heat and let the beans soak for an hour. And then I drain all that water off and give them a good rinse in. Um, then I return the beans back to the pot 
and add more water to cover by two inches. Bring that up to a boil and then let it do a, um, a gentle boil for 30 minutes. So that's a quick soak process and I've done that before. Especially when I do like my bean rounds where I'm like, okay, I'm about to can 15 quarts of beans in one day. I do that quick soak. Green beans, carrots, peas, and corn in two jars and corn in five. I like to mix fruit, but my family won't eat it. They picky, but I have canned the mixed fruit before, or the mixed vegetables before. I'm just looking at this. I want to see, I wanted to see if my book said anything about um, soaking your beans beforehand or anything. anything about it. Nope. I'm sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. See, I have 16 in the chat. So if you are out there and you haven't done so already, please hit the like button for me. Pretty please. It would be greatly appreciated. And I want to invite everyone to join me tomorrow. Same time, same place. I'm going to be canning some orange peach marmalade. I have my grandma's all-American but it's old and she bought it in 1930. Shut up. 1930s. I would love to see a picture of that. Wow. But you see, it still lasts you. How often do you use it, Shine Moss? Just another reason I'm considering an all American. I do want it, but I don't want it. Wow, that's awesome. I know. I know. So tomorrow, same time, same place, um, I'm canning some peach orange marmalade. And Friday, I will be canning some chicken soup, which I'm really excited about. And then we can talk about combination recipes while we're doing that. And Saturday, I am canning beans, which is why we're talking about beans now. <laughs> These are going to be so good. I might just have to fry some chicken and make some red beans and rice and some greens or something. And some cornbread. I don't use it yet because I can't get the dial gauge off. Oh, do you have an extension office? I know you can take your, your canners. They say you should take your canners to the extension office once a year. 
to make sure the dial gauge is um, properly regulated. Is it regulated? It's another word I was looking for, configured or something, I don't know. But um, I have a weighted gauge, so I don't have to take mine. Um, I have thought about just taking it up there just to kind of have them expect, inspect, calibrate it to make sure your dial gauge is properly calibrated. But just to have them inspect, inspect Old Rusty back there, make sure there's no hairline cracks in it or anything. That sounds great. I just started canning on Sunday chicken, ground beef, and strawberry jam. I love it. Strawberry jam. I wanted, I do strawberry jam, but I did see a recipe for just like strawberries in their own syrup. And I think I want to do that. I'm not going to make strawberry pie or anything, but I think I want to can just straight strawberries in their own syrup. I've done ground beef. We like the ground beef. Um, and chicken. I just canned chicken for the first time this year. I think it was a month or so ago. And I didn't do a lot because I know that sometimes with canning meat, the texture kind of changes. And I didn't want to do a lot. And then we opened up the chicken and they didn't like it. So we only did a couple of jars. And maybe I can open them up this weekend or something and see how we like them. And if we like the texture of it, I'm down for doing a day of canning chicken. <laughs> so I've done ground beef and ground turkey. And we really like that. My mom has even brought me over turkey. Um, and I've canned it up for her. Just because when you, you know, when you get stuff like that on the deal, you stock up and we don't have our deep freezer anymore. So when we get, you know, a bunch of ground beef or ground turkey or something like that, we can't just throw it in the freezer. Plus with it being canned, it's already cooked. It's already ready to go. My daughter likes macaroni and cheese. So just like craft macaroni and cheese and ground beef. Crazy about that. But she wanted some the other day. And um, after I came back from the store, she's like, did you get any ground beef? You didn't tell me you were doing it today. I was like, nope. You go down in that basement and you go get you some ground beef and make your own macaroni and cheese and beef. Has anyone else ever tried that? I always called it like a cheap hamburger helper meal. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Okay, so it's 3.04. Still looking at another 35 minutes or so right there. It's a reminder, corn takes a long time. I believe mushrooms take a long time. And beef. Those are all things that take a little bit extra longer to can. That's really strong. So mushrooms are what's the thing? Oh, I've never um did mushrooms in a quart. I've always done them in either a pint or a half pint. But um, either for a half pint or a pint, it says process those for 45 minutes. So that's just as much as the corn. First. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm back now. I can't remember the question you asked me. My employees won't let me be great. I know. <laughs> There'll be times where I'll be working. I'll be at work and I'm trying to catch somebody's live. And it's like a deep live. And they keep coming to me asking me questions. I'm like, look, y'all, I'm in a meeting. I'm in a YouTube live meeting. I cannot answer your questions right now. <laughs> Email me.
I don't remember my question either, Gina. I'll have to catch you with these YouTube treats when I think about the question, what I was going to ask. Right. I know they wait to, or for me, my employees, it seems like we're done at 445. And there are times when I'm just so busy throughout the day that I feel like I haven't had a chance to do my own work. So about 3.30, 4 o'clock is when like that second wind hits me and I'm starting to knock out stuff. I'm just knocking it out, knocking it out. And I always tell them, y'all wait till 4 o'clock to start with the foolishness. Asking me all types of questions that I don't already sent the email out about. You know the answer. Audrey Bellevue, welcome. Another new face to the chat. So thank you so much for joining, stopping by the channel. Um, tell us, are you a canner? Are you a gardener? What do you do? Are you a prepper? I've really enjoyed getting to meet so many new people this week. It's just very exciting. Girl, every damn day. <laughs> Tell them y'all like to cut up, and I have been working from home every morning just trying to stay caught up on emails. But I didn't this morning, and I know when I get off of here, I'm gonna go check my email and see what I got going on. But I know they gonna be cutting up, they gonna say something, always something random. <laughs> I love my work though. <laughs> All right, so still got about a half hour left back there on that corn. And I'm doing, I did 55 minutes for a pint. Hey, hi, Pow Pow. You ready? Hey there. Hi, Miss Gina. So, as you can see, I'm still at work. Let me see if I can clear my screen some. How are you? Okay. Cool. And don't be surprised if somebody walk in while I'm trying to do this. Because <laughs> they won't let me be great. I'm trying to see where I can set my phone. I do think, remember what I had a question about, because when you were asking me the question, you were talking about your... um. Your Hi, everybody. Anyway, <laughs> um, you were talking about the flour and the sugar. And you were showing your gallon um, canisters. Mm -hmm. Where did you get those lids? Because those lids didn't look like regular lids for the like bulk um, jars. It came with the ball jars. And oh. It's not sealed. Nice. It's I have, good. see, I have the half gallons, but my half gallons just have the regular rings uh -huh. like the other ones. So the gallons have that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seal or anything. I got these at Meyer, and I want to say I got, they're like $11. Nice. But I like them. I'm going to have to look for those. Actually, I'm trying to figure out, find me something to prop my phone up because I feel like I'm looking. But I got these lids. Okay. That might be better. I got this and it has this lid. And then I bought some extra wooden lids. Mm. It says airtight, perfect for storing dry goods and decor. But I like these little wooden lids. Those are nice. And they kind of just pop down in it. Yep. Yep. Nice. Girl, I um I'm like you, though. I have plenty of flour. I have plenty because I just bought a big bag and broke it down. But I don't have as much sugar, and I just mm -hmm. noticed that. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I got to get more sugar. I was like, uh-oh. This is the last sugar down in there. Mm -hmm. And then... And I don't even usually use the real sugar. My husband doesn't like... I like Truvia. My husband doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. And I'm growing Stevia, so I'm planning on using that as well. 
um, if I end up liking it. I don't like the ones that's in the packet, but I'm actually growing it, so it must probably be mm-hmm. better. Um, but yeah, he he's like, I can tell that that don't that tastes like some healthy stuff. I'm like, what? It tastes like sugar to me. My husband swears by monk fruit, which is like I haven't spooky. tried that. He likes the monk fruit. I haven't tried that but one. But I think I used so much sugar this year is making the like the jams. See, I use it for cooking. Like if I'm baking or recipes, mm-hmm. I do use it for that. I just don't use like if I'm having coffee or if I'm having breakfast, right. um, oatmeal or something, I'll put Truvia in mine to mm-hmm. sweeten it. Um, but yes, if I'm cooking or canning, of course, because that jam I made, listen, I was like, five cups of sugar? <laughs> it just seemed like it was so much. And I'm like, that's why jelly is not good for you. Yes. It's probably nothing but sugar. <laughs> it is. It's all sugar. But I told my husband, I'm like, okay, so I'm making a batch and I'm using three cups of sugar. But in this batch, I'm getting, what, six jars out. And you're not eating a jar. You better not be eating a jar. You get your no. little spoonful and you do your little sliver or whatever. And you're like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Think yeah. You're to eat a jar of jelly. <laughs> yeah. So I probably could have used less sugar because that's, I ended up with um, five mm-hmm. jars. And they were like the um, eight ounce jars. Uh-huh. They weren't the big ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and I use, so that was like a cup of sugar a jar, pretty much. <laughs> yes, yes. You can do the low sugar recipes. Just make sure you have low sugar pectin. I tried doing, I think I did Splenda on a regular recipe. Mm-hmm. Just, just a mess. It was all gunky and I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I didn't even think about that. And I just had the regular pectin, so... Um, I just made it. I was like, like you said, it's not like you're sitting there eating a whole jar. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have a, I might have had a tablespoon of yeah. it. Yeah. But it is really good. And I, I want to try the marmalade, and I'm definitely canning beans with you on Saturday. <laughs> okay. I, I have red beans, I have black beans, and pentos that I need to can. Okay. So I'm definitely going to be canning those. And I wish I wasn't going to be at work on Friday. Because Friday you're doing the soup and I want to can that. Mm-hmm. But that's okay because I'll, I'll rewatch the video and do it. Okay. Because <laughs> I definitely want to can some soup. And I was like, because I'm, I'm like, I want to can meat too, like chicken. But I'm like, I've heard a lot of people say that they cook it first. And mm-hmm. I'm like, does that make it mushy though? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's you, what you, you know, raw pack I did both to kind of taste and see which one we liked. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not opened either one yet. So okay. I don't want to do more until we taste it. Yeah. So yeah. I have to open up them both. Maybe we'll do a taste test or something, see which one we like better. Yeah, I'll probably... Um, the only thing I was thinking about canning, like I said, was chicken because I buy canned chicken. Mm-hmm. I buy the canned chicken breast. And I always keep that on hand because I feel like if, for one, I don't mind cooking with it for certain stuff. But for two, yeah. like if, if you can't find some meat, I'll make a dish out of some canned chicken. Mm-hmm. I made stir fry last week out of some canned chicken. Okay. You just don't chop it up because it's usually in big chunks in the in the can. Yeah. And then when I, I just took the stir fry and I dumped the chicken in there, I'll chop it up just a little bit so the pieces aren't huge mm-hmm. chunks, but they still get you get chunks of chicken throughout the stir fry. But yeah. And I want to do the roast it. too. I know KK said she just that did like too. chunks of roast. Mm-hmm. And I think that I should be fine because I did like vegetables or beef stew. And mm-hmm. we didn't have a problem with that meat. So I think that's I wouldn't the imagine. Just I, I can see myself cooking uh Stew me and and canning it after it's cooked and it still don't turn to mush. Uh-huh. It's chicken that that's scares chicken. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's chicken that scares me, and of course ground meat. Like I'm yeah. like to cook ground meat and then can it. I I, I do cook um, a bulk of ground beef sometimes, and I just vacuum seal it and freeze okay. it. Okay, 
And then when I want to make a dish, all I have to do is pull it out, let it thaw. And I can make spaghetti or I can make tacos or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I don't have to worry about cooking the meat. I do that I all the time. I the ground meat. And we don't have a problem with that at all. Canning it? Canning it and then opening up and eating it, making something out of it. I have not noticed a difference with that. Really? Mm-hmm. I might try it. It just scares me. <laughs> but I'm like, it's, when it's cooked, I'm like, is it going to turn into like just nothing? I think my biggest thing with the canned meat is it's the liquid. If I'm making ground beef, I'm usually like draining it. And mm-hmm. I know once I had made, ch- and I I can't mind in broth. And I had made chili with it and I just dumped it all in there. Well, then that chili was really soupy and everything. And I had to like let it, let that liquid, extra liquid cook out. That was my yeah. biggest thing that I noticed with the canned meat was just it being canned okay. in the liquid. Okay. I might try it. Because like I said, I, um, I cook bulk ground beef all the time. I've been doing that for years. Mm-hmm. And I will, because I usually buy, um, at Costco they sell the um, five one pound packs in the uh-huh. freezer. And mm-hmm. it's like a 91% um, percent. it's lean. It's like 91.9. Mm-hmm. And um, so I buy those and I will cook up like 10 pounds of ground beef. Mm-hmm. And then I just pack them in one pound Mm-hmm. Um, each in my because I have a vacuum seller and just vacuum seal it up and freeze it. And that's one and thing I have not did. I've vacuum sealed like at Costco. We'll get the packets of the breasts or the the thighs or something. I vacuum sealed those, but I have not cooked it first. Did vacuum sealed it? Chicken. I mean, I don't do that with chicken. I only do it with my ground beef. With the ground beef, mm-hmm. we, and we I only do it. Space. See. And I only do it with the ground beef that I'm crumbling. So if I'm, but I will freeze and vacuum seal um, homemade meatballs and um, burgers and I've done that meatloaf, but I don't cook it. I just prep it Mm -hmm. and I freeze it on a cookie sheet to get it solid so it doesn't mush when I vacuum seal it. And then I vacuum seal them and I already have padded out burgers. Like when I make. I did meatballs and I cooked those first, but everything else mm-hmm. I have made sausage and um, like the burgers and I vacuum sealed those raw, but the meatballs I did cook first. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it would matter either way. Mm-hmm. I just don't because it's, I cook them this way that I cook them. That's so quick. I have a um, pressure cooker. It's uh-huh. like the, um, what do they call those things? It's not the ones that everybody gets, but it's like those. Instapot. The, um, Instapot. Um, and I'll put them in there. They cook in like five minutes. Mm-hmm. And I'll dump I'll dump the raw meatballs in there with whatever sauce I want to do, like a marinara or barbecue. Can you just take and those out? They cook up and they're juicy yeah. in five minutes, so. So Audrey says, when I can chicken breast, it comes out just like how it is can can in the market. Good. You know, little chicken of the sea, when I can chicken thighs, I find that it has a better texture. Okay. Nice. I can tons of chicken and I never cook it first. Okay. Who said that? Audrey. Okay. Was that Audrey? Audrey said the first part, and then Rambling Homemaker said the second part. But I've canned tons of chicken, and it's never cooked first. Okay, I think I would prefer doing it raw fat. Yeah, personally, um, just because it just makes me nervous to cook it, and then because it's going to cook during the pressure part of yes. it. The meat, yeah. <laughs> yep. the processing is going to cook it. And then when I take it out uh, to fix a meal, I'm going to be cooking it a little bit more again. Mm-hmm. Then so. Audrey says, do you cook your ground beef all the way through prior to canning or do you cook the ground beef halfway through and then can it? So when I've done it and I've done ground beef and ground turkey, I have cooked it all the way through. Um, and then I even go a step further. I put it in a strainer. 
I put paper towels up under that strainer and paper towels on top of it. And I'm getting out all that fat and oil and like pushing it down really hard and everything. So I cook it all the way through and then I make sure I drain it super good. Yeah, I can see that. We fall away. And she says, I find raw pack chicken cans up better too. All right, there we go. Raw pack. <laughs> yep. I think I would prefer doing it that way. I now, would feel more comfortable. The chicken recipe that I'm the chicken soup. Um, I am going to pre cook that. I chicken. can see that. I can but see that. When we've opened it up, like I haven't had a problem out of it. It tastes mm -hmm. good. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I could see that with soup. I wouldn't want to put it raw with my vegetables and stuff. Mm -hmm. Even though, I guess, if I cook it in the crock pot or the pressure cooker, I do that. I dump all yeah. the raw ingredients. But, yeah, but yeah. I, I want to taste it. I want to be able to taste, make sure my broth has that chicken soup. I can't do it if, I don't know. I just follow the recipe, really. <laughs> now, in the recipe for getting soup, do they use bouillon? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I bou see that. bouillon, celery, onions, carrots, chicken. And then it says chicken broth, but I'm using vegetable broth. This the bouillon. If you're broth. using bouillon, you don't need any broth. Exactly. That is exactly <laughs> exactly. Greta says banged out 77 pints of meatballs today. Girl. Wow. 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 I usually will take when I do the prep one, especially with ground beef, because I'll usually do it all in one day. I'll do burgers, meatballs, meatloaf, and uh -huh. cooking ground beef. That takes, that's a, she did a lot, because I be thinking I'm doing lot. a lot. <laughs> wow. I be thinking I'm doing a lot, not be I do too. That's hashtag goals right there. Yes. Has anybody raw packed like stew meat or something like that? Um, any beef? Mm -mm. So Audrey says, okay, I'll have to try the ground beef again. I think you would enjoy it. And Greta says, I did a batch of chicken corn soup the way I normally make it. But I pressure canned it. Turned out perfect. Just remember to fill your jars only halfway with the solids. I saw some somebody was Canning, um, did a canning video. Um, is it Mud and Mascara? Do you follow her? I've never heard of that channel. I see. I saw her on um, Triple Threat's channel. Uh huh. And um, what was she canning? And she was only filling it halfway. Mm -hmm. Beans. She was doing beans, and mm -hmm. she was filling it like um, I think it was like a half or two thirds of the way with the beans, and then putting the juice over top of that. Yep, I do that with when I do soups um, about three fourths of the way, just to make sure you got all your dry ingredients in there. And then I top mm -hmm. it off with the broth and everything. So Greta says yeah. that was a mistake. Only one seven. <laughs> My eyes are very bad. So I'm sticky to Ed and miss that. I may have missed something. So seven pints, not 77. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> We might have raided your uh, pantry. <laughs> <laughs> we was already ready to go. <laughs> now, Gina, do you grind your own meat? I don't. I have a KitchenAid, but I don't have the um, meat grinder uh -huh. attachment. I have the cheese grinder attachment. And I might have some other attachment to it, but I don't have the meat grinder one. Mm -hmm. But I'm not beyond it. I'm not beyond it. I have, I've got a kitchen aid and we got the attachment and I love it. I just haven't done mm -hmm. it mostly because I'm like, where are we going to put all this meat? We're, we can't eat it today, but I absolutely love it. And making you need to start sliding that, that money to the side for that reason. <laughs> making the sausage. I've had my brother, cause like I put it on Facebook, like my sausage rolls and everything. Mm -hmm. And he is like, um, how much to get all that sausage on your counter? <laughs> like, I do all this work for you, boy. <laughs> Listen, I am not beyond doing it. I just don't mm -hmm. have the attachment yet. You would love it. 
I know I would because I love my KitchenAid. Uh huh. I do. It's that's a great investment. If you don't have one, it's a great. I love it most is. of my appliances. I love my KitchenAid. I love my pressure cooker. I love mm-hmm. my Crock-Pot. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not living without those things. <laughs> Cause I don't use my crock pot as so much in this time of year. I will mm-hmm. use it, but I don't use it as much. But when the fall comes, mm-hmm. yes, that's my BFF. <laughs> Set it in the morning, and by dinner time, we eat. We're ready. Yeah, yeah. I that's like the grinding beef because sometimes you can find like when meat started going up at Costco I was able to get like a pork shoulder for 20 bucks mm-hmm. and I just split that up and made my own sausage out of it mm-hmm. yep I could see that mm-hmm. see my husband doesn't eat pork so okay. he does the turkey sausage and the turkey mm-hmm. um, bacon now I do me and my kids still eat pork <laughs> mm-hmm. But I don't eat much pork. I um like I had pork chops this past weekend. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you the last time I had a pork chop. I probably almost since we've been together. I don't mm-hmm. eat them that often. Um, but I'm not a huge meat eater either, so mm-hmm. I'm not anybody to gauge meat with. Um, because <laughs> I I can eat meatless meals and it doesn't mm-hmm. bother me. My sister That's why has I brought over tur- like turkey breast just for me to grind up so she can get some ground turkey out of it. Hmm. Yep, he'll do ground turkey. He'll do, of course, ground beef. He eats everything else but pork. Mm-hmm. So all the, I mean, even deer, and he'll do all that stuff too. <laughs> His one, he had a coworker once who got, brought him some bear steaks. They had oh my goodness! And for bear, now I was he brought that mess home. I was like, I don't know how to cook no bear. Oh God, so he, bear. Took, he took it over his brother's house because his brother cooks and he grilled them. He said Did it tastes like it? steak. They grilled it. Wow. And he said it was it tastes like steak to him. So I was like, Wow. I wasn't interested. <laughs> so Audrey says my husband loves the chicken from chicken four chicken salad sandwiches. We I can never keep pan chicken breasts in the house. I love chicken salad. I do too. My daughter also has a very good one too that's already that pre made stuff that you can mm-hmm. buy. Where they have the entrees and stuff um, that they make, and their chicken salad is actually really good. I bought mm-hmm. it once, not really expecting to be wild, and it was amazing. <laughs> My daughter now, this year don't have the fruit in it. <laughs> this year for her birthday. Um, all she wanted for her birthday was for my mom to make her some chicken salad. <laughs> she, she ain't, she's easy. My yeah. daughter, when her birthday come around, she wants me to do her a shrimp and seafood bowl. Uh huh. I was well, like, girl, yeah, that ain't come on for. We, she asked me and uh, my husband for something different, but for grandma, she wanted that chicken salad. And she got her chicken salad too. Mm-hmm. Hi, Mike. Hi, Welcome. Right. So I just hey, said, Mike. yes, I do stew meat raw pack. All right. With veggies and it comes out great. Um, Angela said. It just seems like less work. <laughs> I can only do roasted chicken salad. I I don't know. I like chicken salad, roasted? but I think I would prefer. Um, what is it? Just like tuna salad. I like them both. Mike says chicken salad is delicious. Mona made mm-hmm. some yesterday. <laughs> You still eating on it, Mona? What size do you have Kitchen Aid? So many to choose from. So actually, I have the standard. I learned about the Kitchen Aid is all of the attachments are universal. If you got the Kitchen Aid back in 1922 or in 2022, those attachments are universal. So they're going to fit on whatever Kitchen Aid you have. But I think I have the middle size one. I have whatever this. I think I have the six. Um, I think that's the standard though, the six quart or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's the standard one. I know they have like different names, there's like a they do have smaller ones, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah. So I've and got you know, 12 minutes left, 10 11 minutes left on that pressure canner, and to me, 
it sounds like it's starting to slow down a little bit. It might just be me because I kind of stopped listening. So focused when I was talking, but it sounds like it's starting to slow down, which is fine. We don't have much more time to go. I was going to say, if you know somebody who works for Whirlpool, contact your friend because they get a nice discount on those kitchen aids. Whirlpool makes kitchen aids. Whirlpool, okay. One of my coworkers' daughters used to work there, and apparently she was getting kitchen aids for everybody in the office, and I didn't know about it. And, and you ain't when, I found, when I found out about it, the girl wasn't working there no more. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> How did I know this? Uh-huh. Hi, Micro uh-huh. Farmer. So but I looked a, up. I used <laughs> stew meat yesterday to make a beef stew base. Um, celery, carrots, onions, and potatoes. I know that was good. That sounds good. Sounds good. Roast chicken and tuna. Gotta try it. Um, everybody's saying hi and Angela says, do we have any Whirlpool fans on the live? I know. Whirlpool employees. <laughs> you know what? That's a good question. That is an I'm not playing. Question. And they, when they roll out new gadgets, they get all the new ga- gadgets. Free. Right. So new attachments. I shouldn't say gadgets. The new attachments. Mm-hmm. They get them right away. But mm-hmm. I mean, they get them so cheap that it's ridiculous and not just the kitchen aids they get more food stuff but who mm-hmm. cares about the other stuff <laughs> that kitchen aid i remember when we first got it i got the pasta attachment and the ground beef the meat grinder attachment this is before my youtube days mm-hmm. but we made pasta i got the spaghetti sauce from the basement we ground our own meat for meatballs that was a true homemade meal and let me tell you, that was the best spaghetti and meatballs we ever had. Yep. And I don't think you could run those things into the ground. I haven't met a person ever who has said their KitchenAid is idle now. Right. 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 And I know some people who've had them for 20 years plus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I like the KitchenAid. We got to, um, Mimi, we got to make some more pasta. I've yeah. never made pasta. I've been interested in doing it. I would do it definitely if I had an attachment. Mm-hmm. It was but I've fun. never done it. It was fun. We made did we we made raviolis too. I just didn't have like the little ravioli cutter, so I was using like a knife. But we did mm-hmm. ravioli. Those are those are good. I love raviolis. I love tortellini mm-hmm. too. Yes, tortellini is another good one. Mm-hmm. My people been working today. I'm sorry. I'm multitasking. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. All right, Mimi, we need to add pasta to the list. Writing that down. Mike says, I got beef bones on sale today. Going to make beef broth. Yes. Nice. Nice. I have a um, a little bit left on the rotisserie chicken that I bought. So I need to pull all the rest of the meat off and make me some chicken broth. Mm-hmm. Just um, throw the car- that carcass in. Yeah. Yep. Make me some broth. I only made bone broth once. And haven't tried this since, but we usually get those bones, the, the beef bones from the butcher and um, give them to dog. Keep them in the freezer mm. and give them to Kodak. What breed is Kodak? Husky. I thought I was thinking that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Audrey says, I pickled some eggs. I'm waiting to eat them. Has anyone done that before? If so, how they turn out? I have not. I know. I'm sorry. I know Lydia has. Mm. I don't. I don't like boiled eggs, I and do. I've noticed here recently I haven't been liking scrambled eggs, or just depending on who making them, where I'm getting them from. Yeah, I prefer them boiled, and I like them like in a salad or something. Mm-hmm. 
Now, see, in a so, salad or even in, like, tuna salad or something. I was going to say I added to my tuna. Mm-hmm. I Some people don't put egg though. in their tuna, and mm-hmm. I do. Was she messing with that baby? She was messing with you. Oh, one of my people won't answer the phone. <laughs> Not much more time left to go. Shine Moss, how how is yours going? How much more time do you got left? Oh, so she's is Shine Moss is um is canning corn as well. She is canning corn and some mixed vegetables. I believe she said five five jars of corn and two of mixed veggies. Nice. I'm going to dehydrate some of my um, zucchini because my zucchini has been growing very well this year. Well, mm-hmm. this is the first year I, I grew it. Let's start there. So we're not going to act like I always, always grow it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's growing very well. And we've been eating a lot of it. And I'm like, but I need something else to do with it because, of course, we're going to burn out. We can't eat zucchini every day. That, oh, man, I cannot remember who it was. That dehydrated it? Miss Renee yes, just did a and video did about it. Yes, Miss Renee. Ms. And that's Renee, what made me think yeah. about it. That's mm-hmm. what made me think about it. I saw her video and I was like, ah, I didn't think to dehydrate. And she was yes. like, so she could later throw it into her soups and stews and yep. stuff. I'm like, yep. There it is. I'm we have dehydrated right it before. Them chips don't last in no soup. No, she, she did chunks. I saw Not shit. <laughs> she did some chunks. Which actually, she blended it too, though. She blended it, yep. And I've done that with broccoli. I actually got it from Clausen's World where she just cleaned out her freezer and um, you know, got rid of like broccoli and stuff. She dehydrated it and ground that down. And I did, did I did too, and I'll add that to like my smoothies. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes when I make the dog food, I might sprinkle a little bit of that over it. See, that's gonna be an easy way for me to sneak it into stuff. I could put it in my meatloaves and stuff like that where my kid won't notice yep. it's there. My husband won't care. He'll eat it either way. Yep, but you know how kids can be sometimes. They're not big on every vegetable. Mm-hmm. My my daughter, my youngest, her the two vegetables she can she'll always eat is broccoli and green beans. Outside mm-hmm. of that, it's kind of mm-hmm. you know. Me doesn't like mushrooms, this. but I put it in my vegetable soup. She she don't know it because she sure do be eating it. <laughs> and see, I don't like mushrooms either. I do like the oyster mushrooms, mm-hmm. the ones that um. And Dale grew in that box. Yes. Those are expensive. I go to, mm-hmm. that's the only thing I've ever gone to Whole Foods to buy mm-hmm. is those oyster mushrooms because I was eating more vegan stuff. And they, a lot of vegans will use that as a meatier substitute because it gives that kind of meaty bite to it. Yes. But it is good. Like you just take them mm-hmm. and you take your fork and kind of give it a rough little brush across them and they string out. Uh huh. And it is okay. in the stir fries and stuff. It reminds you of having meat in it. Oh, nice! I'm gonna have to try that with the oyster mushrooms. I got some um some oyster powder, some ground down mm-hmm. oyster, some ground down mushroom powder. Um, and I'm excited to try that. I'm gonna start sprinkling mm-hmm. that on her food. Be like, yeah, you still eat mushrooms? <laughs> I will eat those. <laughs> I will eat those, but the other ones, my husband loves mushrooms, so I cook with his mm-hmm. stuff a lot of times with it, but yeah, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm a texture person, and it's the texture for me. That's why I don't like onions. I like the flavor oh, wow. of good stuff, mm-hmm. but I don't like, I don't, don't put an onion in my mouth. That's, that's yeah, I'm the same way, <laughs> but like, I don't like the texture of like zucchini and squash when it's cooked. I will mm-hmm. not. Yeah, I will not bite down on it. If it's on my fork, I'm just gonna swallow it. I don't like that texture. I prefer it raw. Mm-hmm. I've actually spiraled it raw yeah. and mm-hmm. and um made like um like you could do like some taco meat or something, but you don't cook the the noodles, the zoodles, mm-hmm. the zucchini, but you put the warm meat on it and then your mm-hmm. toppings and stuff, and it gives a crunch for the the dish. I prefer it like I'm like you. I will eat it cooked, but I don't like the texture yeah. so much, but I'll still eat it. 
Um, now we'll do it like if I make like this money rice or jasmine rice, I'll get a zucchini and I'll cube it up pretty small and then I'll mm -hmm. give it a good sear. Mm -hmm. And then mix that in with my I rice. I definitely and sear it. Yes. To it. Yes, I definitely oh. sear it. China Moss says hers is done at 433. Greta says dill pickled eggs are on my list for tomorrow. Yes. I would love some dill pickled eggs. Mm -hmm. I've seen people pickle them and with the beets and whatnot. I tried one of those. I don't like sweet. That's what uh -huh. we use with your your pickles. Yesterday I was like bread and butter. Ugh. <laughs> uh uh. Give me a dill pickle and definitely don't give me no sweet pickle. No ma'am. No ma'am. Um, Mike says my wife hated mushrooms because of the texture. So I used the fruit processor to make them disappear in stew. She love them. Yep. That's the trick. And, I just and I'm okay with that. You ain't even got to tell me you're tricking me. I'll take it that way. <laughs> Audrey says, what method do you use for dehydrating? I just use my um, dehydrator. And I have a video where I did like zucchini chips. But um, just get them to where they're crisp. When you break them, they like crisp apart. And they're ready to go. Um, if you're gonna do chips, I like to pre I like to squeeze in mine before I put them on the dehydrator. And I will be making some peach fruit leather because that le that fruit leather gone. Did not make it a day. It's gone. <laughs> I ordered me a case of peaches from the peach truck. It um I forget what day they're supposed to be. I think on the fifth. Mm hmm Yeah, the fifth is when they're supposed to be here. Some peaches. I'm looking at them right now. Um, yeah. Shine says, I turned the heat down a little because I could smell the corn. Okay. Yep, turn it down. Make sure you're good to go. Mona says, have you tried the spicy garlic pickle? I have not. Oh, but I would like that. That's up my alley. I love garlic and I love spicy. You got a recipe? Do we need to go yeah. to your channel. <laughs> I would love it. I would make it right now. Girl, we got these darn nets that from our plants in our office. Oh, they drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, I need to get these peaches out of here for them gnats start to come. They just sitting mm -hmm. on the table right now. We see them all the time in our office, and it's, I don't have any real plants in my office anymore. I gave all mine away, but some people still have real plants in their office. Like, you know, not food plants, but just regular house plants type plants. Uh-huh. And some Marcia, of the- Marcia says, I just drinking. found this channel. Welcome, Marcia. Thank you so much. Hey, Marcia. Hey, Marcia. You're going to have fun over here because she be cooking. I mean, she be canning, I should say. Canning. She be canning. So, Marcia, are you a canner? I've got my corn back there. It has. It's done. I'm going to take it off. did pints and those were 55 minutes so mine's done i took it off the um heat so now we're just gonna let that pressure drop naturally um mona says i don't can but i buy them in the store let me see my book and see if they got a spicy garlic pickles marcia says kinda i hope they um do because that would be or i would love that me too even if it was just a garlic one, spicy and garlic, or just garlic. I was wondering, I'm like, where is she at? Oh, I was just um, letting you guys know not to close. Two idiots. All righty. 
thank you. Mm, bye. Oh. I'm looking. Sound like me. Fine. Sound like me typing. Ah. <laughs> Is it that loud? <laughs> okay, so I don't see anything in that book. I'm looking this book. talking about sauerkraut yesterday. I see a sauerkraut. I heard you guys talk about, well, of course, I heard it on the replay, but I heard you guys talking about that. <laughs> sauerkraut, somebody, you were talking about cabbage, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you were saying you weren't sure if you could can that. No, you can't can cabbage, but you can can sauerkraut after mm -hmm. it's been for a minute and everything mm -hmm. and um like i was talking to lydia today and i was like all right i'm ready to make my sauerkraut and she asked if i had a crop and i said no i'm just gonna use a jar my first time and if we love it i will get a big crock and just can it up yeah i have to my cabbage fried anyway looking. but um I'm always buying sauerkraut at the store. Always getting sauerkraut. So I would love to just be able to make my own. Now, I missed the first part, of course, of you prepping, get stuff together to can your corn. Is the corn fresh? Is it fresh corn? It's just both. It's both. Okay. I, got, um, I had 12 ears. 12 ears mm -hmm. of corn. Mm -hmm. um, and I said that gave me about two pounds. And then I have a total of four pounds of frozen corn. Okay. Um, get back in the chat. I can always smell whatever I am canning when it gets down to the last 10 minutes or so and starts to cool down. Yep, when it starts, and I, like I said earlier, I feel like maybe that's because what I've noticed is when I open up the canner, that water level has gone down a lot. So that's why I feel like usually when it's starting, it's 10 minutes left, 10, 15 minutes left, and can't start to smell it. Mike says, I roasted two chickens today. Nice. nice. I got to bone the meat for sandwiches and freeze the bones for future broth. Semi, semi, AFK, I'm listening. Okay. Mike, you over there doing it. Ain't he though? <laughs> Angela says, sounds good. Marcia says, I did a pomegranate jelly a couple months ago. I um did a like a pomegranate. I just used juicy juice, like pomegranate flavor. I will make sauerkraut with cabbage and apples. Apples? I have not heard that. I'm gonna have to look that one up. And Audrey says pomegranate jelly sounds amazing. That does. So I wanted to bring it in real close. It is still rocking just a little because there's so much pressure built up in there. Paul makes fermenting lids for making your sauerkraut. Paul, is that, who's Paul? 
I actually have a, I got a kit on Amazon for um, fermenting and I haven't even opened it yet. Speaking of Amazon, I got some stuff. I, I told you I get my, my Amazon packages delivered to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> but I ordered some, which has nothing to do with candy. I actually ordered it for seeds. If I ever wanted to swap seeds or, mm -hmm. or send someone some seeds, the little baggies. Nice. So I ordered a bunch of those. And I thought these labels were going to be smaller. I ordered some labels mm -hmm. to be able to put on the baggies, but these are darn the size of the baggies. And then I also ordered these metal um, tags for your um, garden. Yes, for your garden, because, you know, those other ones, they fade off after you get after yep. the rain and stuff. You can't yep. see what you label something as. So, one second. Yes, ma'am. So, uh -huh. Marcia says, it was, but don't try to go sugar-free. It didn't work for me. That's what I'm saying. I did the sugar-free or the sugar substitute once, and it just was not the same. I think it just messes with the chemistry and everything. So, just give me sugar. And Angela says, Shine Moss, cabbage and apple sound so good. I bet that is good. It's just sour oh, and that's, a little. That's from Still Days. Heart. Give me a second. Be right back. So here's my fermentation kit. See, it's not even open yet. No. I really got it for, I don't know what it's called, the masher thingy. Because I know when you're making sauerkraut, you really have to mash that cabbage down, get it down in there. And I had tried doing it once before, but I guess I didn't have enough elbow string. And it just didn't come out good. So I got this. It's called Mason Tops. But I got it more for this. Kraut Masher. They call it a pickle what do you pack. Mean you're out of that. You know what? Um, yep. That's what I'm dating you. Okay. So hold on. How often do I do live videos? So this week I am doing a live video every day at two o'clock. But I work full time. So I'm actually off this week. I'm on semi vacation because I am working a little bit from home sure. um, half days. I might even try to. But ask. every Saturday night, I do a late night canning live just like this. And um, it is kind of late, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, depending on where you are. But that's like the only time that I have to really, you know, get on and do, do some canning. But this week, so I'm not going to print it because you need Monday to and Tuesday. I do the video you want to print today, anyway, and then video. tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, I will be or going live at 3 p.m. Eastern okay. Standard Time. Tomorrow, I'm going to do the peach orange marmalade, and Friday, I am going to do chicken soup. And then Saturday, back to the late night hour at nine o'clock, we'll do beans. My brain probably did it the day I was doing it. So I'm excited about this master because I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it down there. Not because I was doing it, but the do I ever have any siphoning issues? I sure do. Mm -hmm. So I know with my, me in particular, my siphoning issues are because I am impatient and I have a bad I'm habit. As soon as that goes down, 
I'm done. And um, I'm going to mute Gina real quick. Okay. But as soon as he goes down, I'm done. And then I'm like, I'm you know, I'm starting to take him out. With siphoning, just, um, I guess my only tip to you and for me is to just wait, let it, let it cool down. It's so hot in that pressure canner and so cool outside. It's just too hot. What is siphoning? Is when your liquid starts to come out the jars. And um, sometimes you can see it. It'll be like a little stream of liquid. That's siphoning. And usually it's because of the temperature difference where, um, like I said, it's super hot, 240 degrees in that canner. It's like 65 degrees in this house. They're, they're trying to escape. I feel like I missed someone. Okay, I screwed up again. It's a ball for um, fermenting lids. Yes, I actually have some of those. I'll show you. Marcia says, fantastic. I will be watching. Just a quickie. I'm from Alaska. I'm from Arkansas. And all my family did their own canning. None of my family can. None of them can. So it's me. Gina, you ready? Nope. <laughs> I made my first sauerkraut 47 years ago. Wow. So this was the first time I ever fermented anything. I used, she's writing. <laughs> Look back. I used this, which is Boss for fermenting kit. And it comes with a fermenting lid, which is really nice because you can screw your lid on there. But this little rubber allows for the gas to release without anything coming back in and it comes with a spring. So your spring, this spring, will be in place of these weights because you want to be able to push all your stuff down when you're fermenting. And the weight does the same thing. It's just gonna push it down so it's below the water line. And then it comes with some pickling salt, which I need because I'm all out. But like I said, I tried this. I did it on, I think I made like a relish and I did peppers and those came out great, but the sauerkraut, the texture was so different. And I believe it was because I was just mashing it down with my hands or whatever. And when you're making homemade sauerkraut, you have got to mash it down. You gotta get all that liquid out of there. You gotta break down all that, um, you know, that tough tissue fibers in the cabbage. So we mashing, I'm ready. After your canning process is done, you open the canner and you realize that some of the liquid from your jars has siphoned out into the canner, resulting in low liquid jars. That is a great explanation of siphoning. I hear something. in the canner, must be some water or something. I can just hear it like sound, just sounds like it's like sizzling. Hi, Miss Rosemary. What else can you do with pickles than cucumbers other than pickling? So you can't really can cucumbers, the texture is off. Um, but I know we've said you can do like um, chips cucumber chips. Those are really good. And I've seasoned those just salt, pepper, garlic, maybe some slap your mama or um, some, um, what's it called? Like Cajun seasoning or something. Those are always really good. Say hi to your mom. I'm here, friend from Tennessee. That's Miss Rosemary. That's one of my mom's um, longtime good friends. 
But um, that's something you can do with your cucumbers. I was going to say, I think, I think I'm making this up, though, that Gina freezes her cucumbers. But I might be making that up. No, ma'am. That was, uh, that was uh, Sunshine. Sunshine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be making and she said she didn't time. like it. Yeah, she, she did she say like that, it. but she hadn't tried it. She hadn't. She did say, she, but you know what? In hindsight, you think that's water. I just yep. froze water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. What do ha What happens when you thaw water? It melts. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be. It's gonna be mm -hmm. uh, mushy for mm -hmm. sure. So, and yeah, that's what she's thinking about. And de dehydrating them is probably just best because then if you want them for anything else, you mm -hmm. it only takes a second to rehydrate them. Um, mm -hmm. but you can grind them, make like, you know, your own little cucumber saw, or like we were saying, you can even use that ground down powder and hide it and stuff. People don't realize that they get oh, yeah. and stuff. That would be great in like a refreshing, um, smoothie or something. Yeah. Yep. I and like I cucumber, love, like in my water. Yep. Mm -hmm. Love cucumber yeah. water with a little apple cider vinegar. Can't tell me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, I love um, some cucumbers. My cucumbers mm -hmm. haven't been doing that well. And um, Sunshine, she's just had like, yes, good night, a ridiculous amount of them. Mm -hmm. So um, she she did a video today with her harvesting even more. And she's yes. doing like those Armenian. I saw those. Yeah. And she had one like over her shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I what like, I have coming out there in the garden. I know it's definitely a cucumber or a zucchini or squash or some type. I'm really hoping it's that delicata squash. But honestly, I know I threw. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I was I after we talked about the squash, I was like trying to map out if I had enough time to try to grow some before the season ended. I don't. I'm just going to have to wait because I don't want to chance it because they don't do good in the cold. And mm -hmm. in Ohio, you just don't know. You don't when know. That cold snap you don't. Lydia was hit. asking me today. She was like, when, because I'm in Indiana. She was like, when does it get brick where you are? And I said, well, what's brick to you? Like below zero? She was like, no, like 45. I was Girl, like, that's a, that's a summer evening. <laughs> You said brick. I'm like negative three or something. Now that's brick. Mm. <laughs> so you don't know in Indiana. I don't know. It could be tomorrow. It could it be could. January. Usually by Halloween, it's usually mm -hmm. cold. Like I'm always like, oh, them babies gotta, you know, thank you. In the cold, mm -hmm. it's always cold mm -hmm. by then. But so maybe what I can do weeks. is if we get any at the Amish market because they usually have them and they sell them pretty. They're not ripe yet, so you got to let them ripe. And maybe I can send you some. What's that? The, the, um, the delicata? Oh, yeah. that would be amazing. If I see them, I'll grab them. That would be amazing. Says 45 is barefoot. <laughs> 45, I'm barefoot. <laughs> Mike, like, Mike three, oh, he's, he's in uh, Montana, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's probably still warm in Montana. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, I'd be, I'd already be like, man, this is about to be cold. I don't want it. I hate the winter. I hate the I summer. I just give me fall all year. Yeah. I love the fall. One thing that I will not do though, I will not complain in the summer. It'd be 100. I'm not opening up my mouth because I know in the blink of an eye, it's going to be negative four, negative five. <laughs> I agree. And honestly, as much as I hate the summer because the uh, my plants love Minnesota. it, I deal with it. Oh, Minnesota, mm -hmm. not Montana. Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yep, I just deal with it. I knew it was one of the M states. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it wasn't Michigan. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, I do. I just deal with it because my plants love it. Like once it mm -hmm. got hot, everything started taking off. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm already trying to plan out in my head, like next year, what I'm going to plant and not plant as far as my spring garden. 
because I'm definitely not doing as many tomato plants. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Just not. I have a lot of tomato plants and I have a lot of tomatoes. Mm-hmm. So I think that I'm going to be able to can up uh, so much sauce that yes. that's not going to be. Yes. I'm, it's I not going to be. Uh, I called myself doing a spring garden and I just did like cabbage and um, greens. They didn't come up until the summer. I got nothing in the spring. They didn't come up until the summer. To me, collards and um, broccoli take a long time to come up. Mm-hmm. They they do. Mm-hmm. My mustard greens, they came up like that. But mm-hmm. as soon as the heat hit, they both, yep. I mean, yep. soon as. Mm-hmm. And um, But the collards, they were just slow, slow, slow. And then when mm-hmm. they finally did come, the cabbage moths just ate them. Just laid yep. their eggs and got, they got ate up. Yep. But I bought some netting. But when I do put my fall stuff out, because I'm like, last year, they, when I tell you, they attacked my spinach. Mm-hmm. They didn't even leave me the stems. <laughs> they was like, we, <laughs> they was like, we gonna eat everything. But you know, I had this one collar and when we first moved into the house, I grew collars in that spot. And then in the fall, we turned over all that dirt and stuff. Well, that next year, that collar came back. That collar was three years old. And it just kept producing. And I never did anything to it. We would take the stuff off of it. In the winter, I didn't cut it back. I didn't do nothing. I let her do her own thing. This winter, she finally died. And I was yeah. like, you know what? You did me proud. That's one thing about them. Like, they will survive the cold. Because mine mm-hmm. did the same thing. I, the collars I grew last year, they were still here when the spring hit. Yep. And but I had only done one plant last year because I was my first year trying to grow it. But it just continuously produced. Now, my broccoli, when it got cold, cold here, like cold, Mm -hmm. it froze that head and it pretty much browned up and everything. And I was like, well, that didn't. Yep. That didn't do so well. But them collars, they be like, cold. I ain't scared of no cold. (laughs) Rosemary says, I'm starting in our winter garden. It doesn't get really cold until January. Wow. We grow collars all year long, spring, fall, and winter. The garden item, but the garden item that has been hard to locate are turnip greens. No farmers or nurseries in our Tennessee, Kentucky had none. I feel like I got some turnip greens somewhere. Who said that? Rosemary. Rosemary? Mm Mm-hmm. Um... Do you if do you have a, a actual channel you're putting content out on Rosemary? I would make I would ask because I've heard some people in the community who are growing turnips. Mm-hmm. I don't have it. If I had turnip seeds, I'd send you some because um, <laughs> I haven't looked for them though. I've only tried making I mean growing collards and I bought the red mustards this year and tried those. Mm-hmm. Um, but I somebody I can't remember who I heard saying that they that was one of the things that they were putting in their garden for the fall. Mm-hmm. So I know there's some people in the community and you'd be surprised how many seeds people end up having where they have plenty to share. That's what my husband called himself buying a whole bunch of like um, seeds on Amazon. I had to tell him, babe, don't buy me no more seeds. Do you Mm -hmm. realize how many seeds I get? Just just send them to you. And not even just from that, like when you harvest and then you dry out the seeds from your Mm -hmm. harvest because you're like, look at all these seeds. So I got probably... 2,000 seeds from that one yes. collard plant that finally bolted on me. Now, I, mean, I, didn't, I have to say, I didn't get any seeds from the collard. Why? Because I would take the seeds and I called myself sitting them out to dry once the lawn company came and got them. Uh-huh. Another time, Kodak came and got them. And I was like, I'm uh-huh. tired of y'all. See? Yeah, I got all those seeds. I I mean, I, I have a ton of collard seeds. So mm-hmm. if you want some collard seeds, Rosemary... <laughs> I have a lot of those. Rosemary is my rival. I can't grow it. What's that? Um, he must be talking about the um the collards. He can't grow the collards. Our they collards are so... in April and never came back. I was gonna say they take forever to come up. So sometimes you might think you can't. It's not growing. They take a while. I know because it was, they take a while you know, it was so like, bad. Because I was like, I'm going to have a nice little spring garden. I'm going to have some beautiful cabbage and 
and collards and Mona was, and I was like, they're not coming up. And Mona was like, just leave them alone. They will. And they mm -hmm. did. They do. They slow. Mm -hmm. They slow as peppers. If you've ever grown peppers. Peppers. Yes. Collards is just as slow. And I don't think all the rest of them are like that because my spinach didn't take long to come up and my um, broccoli didn't take long to come up and those mustard greens didn't take, but collards, maybe because they're, they're so um, resilient to the weather. That's why they take so long because maybe they root so well. Yeah, I, don't know. I, th I think so. so. Like I said, that's one collard years, years on it. And that root wasn't going nowhere. Mm -mm. I, I honestly think it's still out there. I know I ain't pull it all up. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah. this fall, what I'm going to do is I'm really going to amend my garden. I'm going to get um, get a soil meter and really um, put some loving into it because it is just not done well at all. Yeah, my soul is totally opposite. It's doing too well. <laughs> the stuff that's growing is like growing in abundance. Uh-huh. And I mean, to the point that it's like shocking me, like I, my pepper plants are loaded with peppers. I, um, I even got scotch bonnets in the garden and I know, um, I was talking to urban garden Chronicle. She's in Canada, but she's a Jamaican, um, lady mm -hmm. and she, her family between her and her parents home, they always grow scotch bonnets. And she said she could never get hers to grow. Mm -hmm. So my it took a long time before the peppers came on because peppers are slow and i was thinking it was something wrong with the plant because i had that plant for so long mm -hmm. and she said well she said i don't know if they have to have you have to have more than one because she said i always had issues growing scotch bonnets and then i just left it alone and kept waiting to see what was going to happen yeah and weeks later i finally saw them coming and now it's loaded with peppers mm -hmm. So my peppers are loaded. My tomato plants are so loaded that most of them are leaning. Leaning. Because it's too heavy. Um, and then, like I said, my zucchini is doing fine. But one of my zucchini plants, I think it finally got a bug in there. I think there's a, um, what those things called the, um, the, um, what are they called? Mm -mm -mm, squash spore bug thingy i think that might be in the plant because my leaves are starting to droop like they're, okay. they're they look they just look weird not right and, and like they're dying or something but there's nothing wrong with the plant you know my neighbor um has a beautiful garden it's right up against his fence and we have a chain link fence and i noticed that some of his zucchini flowers were peeking on my side and i was like you let a zucchini come up on that <laughs> I'm you ain't gonna it. see it. You ain't gonna see it. Every time I let Kodak out there, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> girl, I, I don't know if you saw my short idea where I was at a Rite Aid store. Mm -mm. And the you know how the sidewalk is when you're walking yep. into the doors of Rite Aid. In the like right before you go through the pillars, they have like a sidewalk area, but in the middle of it, it's a, a tree. And it's a crab apple tree. Well, under the crab apple tree, I'm like, why does that look like a zucchini? I'm not a zucchini, but a squash plant. So I look closer. It got flowers on it and everything. It's mm -hmm. a squash plant. So nice. clearly a squirrel or a chipmunk or something yep. took a seed from somebody's garden and dropped it there. They have a whole squash plant growing. I, I did that the other day. We went to the mall <laughs> this weekend. You know, they have their little flowers around the side when you walk in. And there was a yellow flower. And Is that a squash? Yeah, like, no, that's just a re regular flower. <laughs> this was actually a squash. I just told my coworker, I said, would I be wrong if I keep riding past there like every couple days in harvest from the squash? <laughs> if you don't do it, somebody is. Because the, the people, the store people didn't know what it was. Uh-huh. Somebody gonna do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Girl, I'm I'm about to go down. My daughter is calling me on the okay. phone. I'm gonna be listening. Okay, thank you. I, all right, Bye, see you Gina. later. Isn't she great, you guys? If you have not checked out Gina, check out her channel where she is Gina versus Gina. <laughs> but if you did not catch it, the little gasket thingy fell down back there. I took the um, the weight off, no pressure came out. So we're ready to crack, crack just a little bit 
open that lid. I'm gonna give it another couple of minutes. That's just gonna let all that hot air kind of come out and you can see where it's steaming now. It's gonna let all that hot air come out, let that cool air come in so it doesn't shock the jars, don't have any siphoning going on or anything. So it's, it's gonna be patient and let it let it ride. Um, try to catch back up on this chat. I can smell it and I bet you anything, some of that water level has gone down. We're gonna take a peek in a minute and see. Our collards bolted in April, Rosemary says, and never came back. So we had to pull them up. Mike says, oops, trying to type with Pinky, laugh out loud, eating some of my roasted chicken. <laughs> Sometimes it beats like that. You just got like one little clean finger. <laughs> You are correct. Does rain amount make a difference? I feel like what it depends on what it is. I know last year I only had maybe two or three cucumbers come up, but it was a rainy year. And I always go to the Amish market and um, I was like, you know, do you guys got any cucumbers? She was like, it was too wet. So I didn't feel bad. I'm like, the Amish couldn't do it. I'm glad I, I couldn't do it either. <laughs> Audrey says, I had to let my garden go here in South Florida for the summer, but I'm prepping fall. Okay. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I think he was talking to Gina about her video. Thank you all for a grand time. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Angela. Thank you so much for always popping in and joining. Um, yes, she is. What is her channel? Her channel is Gina versus Gina. So G-I-N-A, V as in Victor, S as in Sam, Gina, G-I-N-A. Um, my zucchini still just leaves so far, sad. I noticed that I have maybe three flowers coming up. Like I said, I don't know if they're zucchinis, cucumber, squash, the delicata squash. I don't know because I angrily drop seeds. I did not drop seeds, I threw seeds. <laughs> it was super hot, I was trying to beat the rain and I didn't. And once like the storm passed, I went out there, but then the humidity just hit you. And I promise, I was just like, <laughs> I don't know what I got, we gonna see. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna open this canner up. I'm not going to keep you today. I got corn everywhere. Let me get this up real quick. My water level has went down, but not too much.
Did you hear it? That's another one. That corn looks so good. I know. <laughs> Pop, you heard it. Good. Back near 100 next week. Wow. End zone four. Crazy. Can't escape this. This heat. A little heat wave. So, you guys, we've been on here for over two hours. And thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for joining me, sticking with me through all of this where we can some corn live tomorrow. Um, join me 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be canning orange peach. <laughs> Think about it. Peach orange marmalade. Fantastic. I haven't tasted it, but I already know there's just something about that marmalade that makes it a step above jam and jelly and everything else. Pop. And then join me on Friday. Same time, same place. We're canning chicken soup. And we'll talk about some of the do's and don'ts of canning while I'm canning. Why I am canning chicken soup and not chicken noodle soup. And talk about the um, combination recipes and everything. Chine Ma says, I got 11 minutes, then I'll be done. Chine, do you want me to stick with you? I don't mind it. I'm just sitting here. Um, and then Saturday, I will be canning up some beans. Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. No, because um, I do a late night canning. But I'll be canning up some beans. Yay. I know it's summer. It's just July. August is almost here. But like, you know, me and Gina were saying, you know, here, it ain't going to take nothing for them temperatures to start falling again. So I got to start thinking about my um, my winter meals. You know, my fall meals. They're going to want some soup. They're going to, especially my daughter, she's going to be out. She's going to think it's hot, not wearing no jacket. She's going to come home freezing because that temperature done dropped. You know how the kids like to do. So I need to make sure I got my soup on hand. <laughs> um, do you do water bath also? Yes, ma'am, I do. Tomorrow, the marmalade will be water bath canned. And yesterday, I did a live where we did pickles. And that was water bath canned as well. Um, so, yes, I do it all. I do it all. Um, my husband, who's a trucker, um, he likes to take the soups with him. So we are going to get start um, gearing up for fall. So I'm going to do some soups and some beans. It's going to be fantastic. Yum, yum, yummy. Um, yay. I, a pleasure being here. Pop, thank you so much, um, Audrey. I, it has been an absolute pleasure. So, like I said, Erica, Carbon Q, Marsha, um, Dr. Geneva, I believe it is, um, Audrey, thank you guys. I feel like you're, I don't know if you've been watching my channel or not, but you're definitely new to the chat. I don't ever recall seeing your names in here. So, thank you so much for joining. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like button for me. Please and thank you. And if you're not, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification button. That way you're notified when new videos come out. When I do new videos, I don't do them too often. <laughs> but thank you so much, all of you so much for joining. I have appreciated it. And I hope that I can see you all tomorrow where we'll can some orange and peach marmalade. And the recipe, the... Um, the link to that video has already posted. If you want to check out my channel, go all the way down on the very first screen and you can see the upcoming lives that I have planned. And the recipe to each of those lives is in the description. 
So if you're interested in what we're canning, maybe you want to join along, hop up on the video like Gina did, or just can along with us like Chine Moss. The um, recipe and ingredients are listed. So please check those out. I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.